Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back once again to TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and today we've got sort of a special edition uh, for you. I'm here with Joe Snyder. Joe happens to be the product trainer for FCCC, Freightliner Custom Chassis, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the S2 RV chassis. Uh, before we get started with that, a little bit about Joe. He's been with Freightliner, you said, 11 years, yep. FCCC, mm -hmm. as the product trainer uh, the whole time. And in the RV business, you get to know the people who really have the information <laughs> and can help you out. And I'm here to tell you, Joe is one of the gems in the industry. Pleasure to have you here, Joe. <laughs> Good to be here. Thanks. You know, uh, let's get started. First of all, this is one of the unique chassis in that it's only built for the RV industry, unlike most of the other chassis. What can you tell us about this a little bit, and why did they start or build this chassis? Yeah, so when we talk about the super C part of the industry is probably the fastest growing part of the industry today uh, when it comes to motorized vehicles. And a lot of super C's have, have been really built on either uh, truck chassis or from that it might be more automotive truck chassis, they might be big truck ma uh, chassis, but no one was really building a super C cab chassis that was made to be an RV and just be an RV. And let's face it, the RVs that are, are kind of a unique vehicle, you know, when you build a truck and you fill it up with stuff, all that stuff goes into the middle. But when you build an RV, all your storage is on the outside. Your slide outs are on the outside and you got roof mounted things. So everything's very top heavy and outward mounted. And to be able to control that type of weight and build a, a, a chassis to control the, those weights, to have a really a premium ride and drive experience in the RV industry. That's why we wanted to build the S2. So when we talk about Super C, in case you're not familiar with the term, it means that it has a cab and a chassis. Uh, Freightliner custom chassis in the RV industry is really well known for building class A's, which don't have a cab on them and generally have a, a, a rear mounted engine. So today, we're, again, we're talking about the cab chassis with the engine up front and uh, a little bit more about that. Um, before we get too much into the specifics of what we're looking at under here, what is it that FCCC does as a company that maybe sets them apart or that can't be duplicated by others? Yeah, um, I, I learned from a book called Uncopyable and another book called Uncopyable Sales Secrets uh, uh, and the author's last name is Miller, uh, Kay Miller and, and um, her husband, Steve Miller, but not their rock star, Steve Miller. Okay. Um, but uncopyable is, for Freightliner Custom Chassis is we have over 450 service locations throughout the country. We have uh, 10 parts distribution centers that can feed those dealerships and make sure we keep our RVs up and running. And that type of experience really can't be duplicated by a startup company or a company that just builds a few RV chassis. We are able to to um, utilize that network from Freightliner trucks, that same network, and use it as our network to service our RV customers. Okay. So that's what some of our uncopyables. You were telling me earlier, they just come out with a new app, the 24 seven. I'm gonna pull up mine right now and, yeah. and give you a little shot. Uh, I just signed up on this one. You can see if I go in here, I can go to my maintenance guides, my manuals and so forth. What is uh, really the importance of this app to the end user? How would they best use it? Yeah, so we came out with 24-7 Direct app a few years ago, and man, I tell you, it just makes it easier for the customer to get in contact with us and our dealers, know what their capabilities are. So when you do map it out and you say, hey, I wanna to go to this dealer that's nearby, it actually lists out their hours of operation, their phone numbers, but also their capabilities of that specific dealership. This new app called My 24-7 Direct actually gives you the ability to be more interactive with your maintenance. So we see customers that, that don't know, hey, I need to grease my driveline every year. Okay, well, yeah, you do need to do that every year. The app now, once you start the app, put your mileage in there and tell them what the dates is, are and everything, it'll actually help you keep track of when you need to do your next maintenance and what 
on your maintenance records need to be done each year? You know, for somebody like myself, that would be extremely helpful. I know others are pretty uh, diligent about their maintenance. Some of us not so much. So, great app. So the, yeah, it's, a, it's it is a great app, and it, you know, it's a next step. Uh, I'm sure we'll get more and more automated as the years go by. But um, but this is a, a really a, a good leap forward for people that really want to help take care of that dream they're purchasing. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you can afford one of these, you you've really uh, attained a dream. Uh, it's a dream I have one day, and I, when I see these going down the road, I'm like, wow, there is another dream achiever. So we appreciate that. We want to honor that and help build that experience. Okay. Um, well, let's get into a little bit more of the particulars and specifics on this. Let's start up front. And uh, right now, with it up in the air, we can't show you a whole lot of things with the cab. We may do that later. But what would you like to point out that really uh, kind of sets us apart? Yeah. So when you're looking at this particular coach there's a couple of things that make it different than other c class units that are out there it's air ride or, um, in the rear and having air it also has air brakes so when you want to make sure you have that confidence when you're going down the road that you're going to have a nice ride experience and also you're going to have a nice stop stopping and feel confident you're stopping and braking and so you can notice that the drum brakes are right here there's huge pads on these Okay, so these pads are going to last a customer about 125,000 miles. Okay. Okay, so in general, most customers never have to do a brake job. Yeah, so, that's true. So we have uh, drum, drum brakes on this particular chassis all the way around. Another thing I notice, of course, it's a, it's a solid front axle. And what happens when I'm going down the road and I hit a big pothole what keeps it from you know jerking me off the road what yeah. assembly here yeah so it really has to do with the geometry so you have a, a spring up front right and this spring whenever it goes up and down your tire goes up and down um, that could you know jar the steering forward or, or, or backward but because our steering linkage coming from the pitman arm right here there's a gearbox up here there's a pitman arm here this pivot point right here is on the exact same pivot point as this spring hanger so because they're they're moving together your steering never jumps around in your hand and they call that bump steer and bump steer literally means if you hit a bump your steering wheel might turn and your coach might is going to turn too uh -huh. that's the road steering the coach we never want to have that situation we don't have it in our class a's and we certainly don't want to have it on our on our super c either so okay. that's that geometry right there keeps that from happening okay Okay, that makes sense. Speaking, speaking of which, though, we, we talk about, remember the turn angle on this particular coach? Is a 50, I'm, I'm gonna guess 51 or 52, 50, is it? 55 degree 55. wheel cut. 55, okay. Yeah, a lot of coaches out there can't turn that tight. That's almost what a class A can do. Yeah, our, our class A's will do uh, up, up to 60. Uh, with the beam axle, they're all at 55. So this is a, a true 55 degree wheel cut, which the importance of that is we want to make sure you can make a sharp turn. If you get into a cul-de-sac or someplace where you need to make a turnaround, we don't want you to have to back up. Um, really, if you have to back up your coach, that's the time you want to be the most cautious. It's 90% of the accidents happen when people are backing up. Yeah. So if we can eliminate the number of times you need to back up by having a better driving experience up front and a better wheel cut, we can make those sharp turns without ever having to back up. Yep, and most people look at these big truck chassis as being hard to maneuver, and that's really not the case. I'd encourage anybody that's looking at one to come out and take one for a drive. And well, we know this isn't out. a truck chassis. Well, true, true. This is an RV uh, chassis. RV chassis, yes, so, uh, uh, specifically. But, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. This chassis won't be built to be anything other than an RV, whereas right. other manufacturers build a chassis and it might be shipped to an RV manufacturer, it might be shipped out to be a dump truck. And many of your smaller Super C's are on the, uh, like the 550 Ford or a Dodge Diesel or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. This, and like you say, that's not made for an RV. This is specifically. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, let's move back a little bit more. And I know we're getting dark here. I hope you guys can see up here. Uh, we've got the water separator right up here uh -huh. and uh, I don't know if you can get a shot of that Jody explain a little bit what this is going to do for us yeah so that's a fuel water separator that's part of the uh, the filters for your fuel you have two fuel filters you have the fuel water separator and you have a fuel filter 
and that that one is actually located up a little bit higher it's kind of buried from here but if you're if you don't have the coach up you can actually just open the hood and see it right so but a fuel water separator what that does for you if if you get condensation in your fuel tank that water water is actually heavier than fuel so the water will go to the bottom of the tank if by chance some uh, water got picked up in the pump and sent it to toward the engine that water will fall to the bottom of this uh, fuel water separator and you can just open up the bottom edge of that let a quarter cup cup of fluid out and that's all you got to do you can close it right back up now how do i know if i have water in my fuel i'm hoping it gives you a warning <laughs> there's a there's a warning light on your dash yeah so there if again if you get just a little bit too much water in there there's a sensor in there that says hey water and fuel it'll send a light that light comes on you let a quarter cup of fluid out and you're good to go yeah you know another thing as we were talking earlier uh that you pointed out and it's rare that you get to see this view you know while you're standing particularly but your drive shaft right here yeah uh, how often does that need to be lubricated and you know <laughs> what are the risks if they don't all the grease points on the chassis, which will be in the manual, need to be greased once a year. And that new app would give you that yep. warning or heads up that yep. you need it? If you need that uh, annual service, it's going to give you a, an amber light saying, hey, you have 90 days to get your service done. And as you get closer to needing that service, it's going to give you a red light around that service. And then you're going to go in and check it off when it's been completed. Okay. And it'll start right back over again. Okay. But yeah, that's that's a little bit about, I mean, people don't think about, you know, it's a very long drive line, so you, you definitely want to make sure that, that is, that's grease, but there's also other grease points that are, again, um, these joints up here all have grease points on them. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure that that's an annually done and annual. Of course, TransWest is a Freightliner dealer. This is something we can do at our shop. A lot of the people like to do it themselves. That's why they might get the Super C. So these are some things to, to not forget, I guess. So that's one of your uncopyables, right? So yes. there are very few locations out there. Uh, and I mean, when I say few, there's probably maybe three RV dealerships that can service the chassis uh, that are Freightliner dealers. Yep. And But you're the only one that's a Freightliner sales dealer and service dealer. Uh, an RV that, dealer, that yeah. and an RV dealer. So, the capability of, of a location like this to be able to serve their customers, having a home base out here, you're pretty lucky. Yeah. You're very lucky. Yeah, we know we are too. Uh, let's walk back and anything that you see that should be pointed yeah. out. I've got questions uh, on a couple. Of just things. before we head back there. Okay. On the side of the engine, there's actually a air compressor. We talked okay. about air a little bit ago and having mm -hmm. air ride in the rear, air brakes. So that air compressor comes back here to an air dryer. Okay. This air dryer has a filter on the top side. It needs to be replaced every three years. Okay. A lot of customers neglect the air dryer filter. And I just want to make a big point of that. Use the app because the app won't let you forget. And uh, so it's important to have that. The air dryer is in, uh, responsible to clean the dirt out of the air and then also keep it dry. And it's gonna feed that dry, clean air into these air tanks up here. Now these, these air tanks, they're all painted black, so they're even hard to see in the middle of the daylight, but, but uh, these air tanks, it's important for you to use the drain lanyards, and you'll see them here. And you can hear them. You can and actually reach them from the side too. You don't yeah. have to climb underneath. So you'll open the bay door on the side and they'll all be uh, located in one location where you can pull on them. I would recommend pulling on those before you go out on a, a trip. So you want to do your pre-trip, add just pulling on the drain lanyards just so that you hear air. If you, and if you hear it spitting a little bit of water out, you want to wait until it's done spitting a little bit of water out. That's pretty normal. If it pours a bunch of water out, then I would recommend getting your air dryer serviced and go ahead and drain all the water out of it. You may even need to start the coach back up again to air the tanks up again, turn it back off, come and get the rest of the water out of it before you take it in to have it serviced. So, I, you know, just a little side story. I remember maybe two or three years ago, you were here doing some training and you pointed out the one, two, three maintenance, you mm -hmm. know, the first year, 
you every year you're always changing your oil you're yep. changing your filter yep. and you're changing the water separator filter is yep. it yep. each year uh, every two years you're changing that air filter and every three years the air dryer filter. that's it one two three yeah. if you can remember that you you'll be miles ahead of a uh, uh, a lot of other people out there. So. And as you age, you'll get that reminder on your app. So <laughs> That's right. Don't worry about forgetting it. That's right. Uh, okay, let's move down a little bit further. Uh, another thing, you know, he's just pointing out we've got the uh, volumetric airbags, and let's get a shot of those uh, right yeah. up yep. here. Yep. And I don't know if it's getting too dark to see, but you can see how large these airbags are. And so what, underneath is, uh, at the bottom of these airbags is for the airflow? Yeah, so underneath, you'll see the airbags up here, and then underneath it's, a, what, a bell-shaped housing, and we call this a volumetric airbag. So you have the airbag, and then underneath you have more air inside of this bell housing, which uh. gets, the more air we have to compress, the better the ride quality we have going down the road. And so that, that gives you that, as you're going straight down the road, that's giving you that nice, solid, and you know, floaty ride where you feel like, wow, this is mm -hmm. really a nice ride. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take all the wrinkles out of the road. When we talk about um, stability side to side, we need additional support. And so we always use hard parts for that additional support. And that's why we have this sway bar here. So that, this huge, solid sway bar that goes uh, around here is what's going to give that side-to-side -side stability. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that we use that's different than other manufacturers are um, uh, sack shocks. So sack shocks are twin tube hydraulic shocks that um, dissipate heat. So if you're going down the road and you know that roads are pretty bumpy sometimes, uh, you want to make sure that your shock doesn't heat up to catastrophic failure. If you have gas shocks, gas shocks, if they start to leak, they don't show it. They just, you can maybe feel it, right? Uh, a hydraulic shock, if it came to catastrophic failure, it would actually start to leak. Okay. Well, it doesn't happen very often, which is why we use this switch to sack shocks. We would do our durability testing it's 10,000 miles replicating 125,000 miles. Okay. So it's a lot of beating up and heating up of shocks. When we used gas shocks before, we'd go through two or three sets of shocks. Yep. Now maybe we replace one, maybe we don't. Okay. And so that's why we use sacks. Parent company of sack shocks is? Uh, well, it's Daimler, I believe, or well, Rolls-Royce. It's, it's actually Rolls-Royce. Yeah, yeah. So when you think about the components going into- Another training. Tip yes. I learned years ago. So that's, that's right. I was trying. I was testing a little bit there, <laughs> but um, but people think about Freightliner. Sometimes they think about Freightliner trucks, and they think that it's uh, you know oh it's just another truck going down the road, and in fact Freightliner trucks, our sister company, and Freightliner custom chassis, Freightliner trucks the most customizable trucks on the road, in and of itself. Uh, and then Freightliner Custom Chassis, we do the unique stuff that they, you know, maybe stay, want to stay away from. And uh, well, so that brings up a good point. Freightliner already has the M2. You can put a, yeah. a 6.7 liter engine in that, the same as this. Yeah. Why develop an entire chassis just for the RV industry? It, well, what's it, so unique? Again? Yeah, so it, the uniqueness of it is the RV industry would rather have a deleted back of cab yeah, for one thing, mm -hmm. um, having a deleted back of cab allows them to easily just start building the coach. We will do that. Freightliner trucks didn't want to do that. Um, okay. So that that was too unique for their build schedule, which makes sense. So yeah. uh, um, another thing was fuel tank. They will have dual fuel tanks up front. And on a Freightliner truck, you could get 30 gallon tanks up front, dual or single. Or you could get, you know, 80 or 100 gallon tanks up front, dual or single. Uh -huh. uh, now we have one single tank in the middle of the frame rail, which allows the manufacturer to build around the front of the cab uh, very easily. So okay. when you come out and you're looking at a coach, you wonder if it's an M2 or is it an S2 RV. If it has fuel tanks up front, then it's an M2. If you have a fuel fill in the rear, then that's an S2 RV. So. Um, and again, we did some different things with the suspension. 
that are unique to Freightliner Custom Chassis that weren't offered okay. with. So all of those things, the suspension, the fuel tank, and the cab are some of the main highlights uh, that differentiate yeah. the S2 RV from an M2. Yep. So in a few minutes, hopefully, we're going to be able to drop this and, and talk about the cab a little bit more down at ground level and look inside. But is there anything else back here that, that you want to point out or you think that's unique or special that a potential customer should know about? No, I, I would just highly recommend that, you know, if you're considering something like uh, an S2 RV or a, a Super C that you drive it. Um, I had really cut my teeth in the industry on driving the, the Class A vehicles out there and I knew how well they drove and I thought there wasn't anything as good. And then it was time for us to bring this to market many years ago now and we started doing a video for the industry. Uh, I got to drive it and it was the first time I'd driven it. And I kid you not, it wasn't 10 minutes down the road I was calling my boss and saying, hey, this thing drives awesome. Uh, I was really proud of the product that we brought to market. And if it's something where you think, well, I'm not sure it could drive as well as a Class A, or I'm not sure I could handle it, I'll tell you this. The larger the vehicle you buy in the RV industry, the easier they are to handle, meaning I could drive one of these eight to 10 hours easily, get up the next day and drive it again. Um, I, I assure you, you can't <laughs> do that on a Ford or a Dodge. It's just not as comfortable. I don't mean to be yeah, yeah. putting anybody down, but this is the best uh, chassis for this category, Super C. Yeah, I mean, you are, you are spending more money. You should get more ex better experience for that money, and you truly do. But yeah. don't trust me. Come over here. Take one out on a ride and drive and, and test it out for yourself. I always tell people that. I, I can say as much as I want to about it, but the proof is in the pudding. You really need to get behind the wheel if you're, if you're considering one of these. Speaking of which, uh, as you can see, the unit's being lowered to the ground. Let's go back up to the front and talk about the cab. It's got kind of a unique bumper and a couple of things, and we'll look inside. Yeah, so... We did steal a few things from the M2, right? We did steal the cab and the front bumper, uh, but we really built a new chassis from the ground up. Wheels up, this is an all new chassis. It's not an M2 chassis. Okay. But some of the benefits that you get from this is, you can notice that we have a three piece bumper. So there's a wing on one side, center piece, and a wing on this side. Uh, what's important about this is if you did get into something here, uh, this bumper would actually break away. It's not gonna tear your tire off. So a one piece bumper, if it gets into your tire, it could really damage the tire. Uh, this is really built to protect the tire. So much so that on the back side of this, there's actually a welded piece on this flange here. And that welded piece makes sure that the, that the bumper cannot get into the tire too deep, okay? There's two breakaway bolts here and this piece will come off. You're actually legal with just the centerpiece. Uh, and then uh, a little bit about the headlights here. These are composite. Uh, they're actually stronger than the fiberglass hood. So if, if, if there was an impact up here, uh, this would not actually probably not get damaged. Uh, it would probably still be good. Why do I tell you that? We don't talk about accidents. We don't talk about negative things. The reason I tell you that is a lot of people say, oh, I'm worried about rocks or something getting up in here. That's the more common situation. A rock kicks up and breaks your glass. That does not happen. Uh, that's how strong these are. It can take an impact, let alone a rock. Uh -huh. So uh, a little bit about that. Of course, here's your air intake. Um, looking at the hood, we've got, thanks, Mark. Thanks for grabbing that. It takes about 13 pounds of pressure to open this up. So you can see I'm barely pulling on it. I can lift this with two fingers, okay? Anybody could. It has a, uh, a spring and a shock on it to help assist and lower the hood. One of the reasons is for safety. Say, I don't know, you had a light come on and you wanted to check your fluids when you're going down the road and a gust of wind came by mm -hmm. and blew the hood, 
it wouldn't hurt you. You could just push it right off you. You just saw it was like 13 pounds of pressure. So even with a gust of wind, you could just push it right off. So that's another safety item that's just built in. Notice the uh, slope of the dash on the inside there. So we have that sloped hood, we have the sloped dash, so you can take advantage of all the visibility. That's a, a 2,500 square inch windshield. That's uh -huh. the largest windshield in the Super C uh, industry. So again, you want to enjoy the view around you when you're, you're driving through the mountains or driving near the mountains or wherever, you can see everything. Yeah. And any kind of uh, object that might be in, you know, down by the road. While we're here, just again to uh, reiterate, something that you can't do with Class A's very well is see the engine and do, do, do your, your own, own services and maintenance. Yeah. So now you can actually see pretty much everything. And I can actually step right inside the wheel. Uh, I'm not going to do it and get my pants dirty right now, but it's easy to work on this engine. And a lot of the Super C buyers are that type of buyer. Yeah. They do their own maintenance when yeah. they can. Yeah, we, we, we consider them the adventure part of yeah. the industry. <laughs> yes. So, and to that point, you can actually loosen the bolts there too and, and just move the wing uh -huh. out, hinge it out, and get right in there and do whatever kind of maintenance or check you want to do. But like I said, when you're, before you go out and you're doing your pre-trip, it's nice to do a quick visual on all of these, um, like you have your power steering fluid here. Uh, you can see the fuel water separator down there, but a light will come on for that. There's also uh, your air cleaners over there. So everything that you would want to have access to, uh, you have access to it. So why don't we step inside if you have a few minutes and point out some of the features. Let me, let me on the show dash. you one cool thing. Here. Oh, sure. See the hood? That's kind of cool. Nice soft landing. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. You want to come in this? You want to uh, back? You can go, go in that okay. door. I'll meet come you inside. Come over here for a second. So I just want to show you a couple of things. One is this is a breakaway mirror. So it, even if you did get into something, it, it's not going to damage your mirrors. Uh, the other thing is people worry about mirrors shaking and things like that. You know, I could do a pull up on these. It's very, very solid. When it's closed, it's locked into the coach. Big grips here. If you're an adventure RVer, you might be RVing in the snow. You can have your gloves on and get a hold of this. We have a seal on the outside of the door and we have a seal in the door jam itself. So it has a dual seal, keeps it nice and quiet and also keeps that, the comfort of the uh, climate inside and outside separate. Always get in and out of the coach using the grab handles. We want three points of co contact getting in and out. So you can grab the door or you can grab the steering wheel itself right here. Climb in, always keeping three points of contact. Uh, you'll notice that the key is over here. So that's when you're outside of the coach, you can actually just reach up. You don't have to reach across. You can reach up, put your key in there and start it up and start doing your pre-trip. Go around the coach, check your lights, whatever you want to do. In this coach, you'll notice there's a pedal down here. That's for your tilt uh, and telescopic. So you can see that right there tilt and telescopic so you know i'm 6'3 i'm very comfortable in here uh i've seen i've seated guys in the coach that are 6'6 six, 6'8 six, six, they're more than comfortable in here as well some of the things that uh, you you might want to get familiar with it are the the buttons that are on the dash here uh, if you want to come around on the inside I'll, I'll show those to you as well Specifically, we're going to talk about the engine brake, or what people call an engine brake. Uh, on the B6.7 liter, which this coach has a B6.7 on it, is a 360 horsepower, and it has what's called a variable geometry turbo brake. So that variable geometry turbo brake is located right here. And you'll notice it looks like a circle with some, some pads on the outside of it. And so whenever you see a brake symbol, it's always going to have pads on the outside of it, whether it's here or maybe a light on your dash, you'll see a circle with pads on the outside. So that's 
that's where you turn that on and over here you see uh, a few different uh, buttons one I'll, I'll tell you about here this is for diesel particulate filter now this is one that you're probably never going to use which is why it's way over here it is uh, used more in the truck industry. The RVers tend to not ever have to use it because the diesel particulate filter is cleaning itself as it's going down the road. Now, when people hear the word filter, a lot of times they think, oh, great, another maintenance item. But this is not a maintenance item. Diesel particulate filter for RVers should last you well over 100 to 200,000 miles. So it, it's, it really is a seamless thing. Now. I like the diesel particulate filter because I live in Southern California and I can see the mountains every day now because of that. Mm -hmm. And my kids don't know what a smog day is. Oh my, that's so, amazing. So it's, it's, yeah, it's ridiculously great. You have heated mirrors. This also uh, is a di different button that you don't see in other uh, manufacturers because they don't have an air ride. So air ride in the rear. We can actually lower the air in the rear so that when we're backing up to hook up to, I don't know, a horse trailer or whatever, you can lower your coach, get underneath the ball hitch, and then you can raise the coach back up. I remember when that was added a couple of years ago, the, when you're leveling your coach, it's always nice to dump your airbags and get it as low as possible mm -hmm. before you engage your jack. So that's a nice feature. So those, those are probably some of the more, uh, uh, it, you know, unique buttons to this particular coach that you might not have on, on some other uh, super C's out there. Uh, other than that, a lot, you know, again, look, noticing the, the uh, slope to the dash and noticing the slope of the hood. Really, when you're sitting here in the driver's seat, you can see the whole world going by. It, it is just an amazing view. You're, you know, the mirrors are not, don't have to be special mirrors that you see on, on some vehicles that are modified to be RVs. They uh -huh. have extended mirrors. No, these, these mirrors are, are there uh, already uh, and uh, in the right spot. So And, and having driven these a lot, uh, I can testify how comfortable they are, how easy it is to see all the way around you uh, with that 55 degree wheel cut, very maneuverable. Just just a great unit all the way around. If, if you want, I will, I will tell you one other thing here too. Uh, when you're looking at this here this is your transmission shifter so if you're used to an automotive experience where you're putting a putting it into gear this you just you know you're going to keep your foot on the brake you're going to release the parking brake and you're going to put it in drive right and then uh it will go through the gears now it will say six on it over here and then over here it'll tell you what gear you're in so it might say six one and then six two six three now you can actually also tell it to hold a specific gear as well. So as you're going up in the mountains and it wants to shift into fifth gear too early, you can actually say, hey, I want my top gear to be four. So you can hit the down arrow to four, and it'll hold fourth gear. Mm -hmm. So Very it, important coming downhill too. It, it helps right. save your brakes. Yeah, saving your brakes on the way down, you're definitely gonna have your, your turbo, variable geometry turbo brake on, VGT brake and that that's going to help you save your brakes too and we can talk a little bit about that in that when you're coming downhill you want to let your rpms go high okay that's when your engine brake is working the hardest and at about 2400 rpm you're going to hit your brakes and bring it back down to 1500 rpm and then let your engine brake work again so you're on your service brakes you're off your service brakes allowing your service brakes to stay cool and have a nice uh, trip on the way down as you did on the way up. Yep. So, yep. Well, Joe, I want to thank you very much for being here today. Always great information. You're going to be around tomorrow also, I believe. Yes. And do a little training. So yep. uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Appreciate everyone at TransWest giving us the opportunity to share a little bit more and hang out with you all. So thanks for the invite. You're welcome. And uh, to all of you, thanks for tuning in. Kind